Chapter 5, Gas Emissions In his grandparents' home office, Thado alternated between doing his homework and playing on his electronic device. Meanwhile, in the living room, Pop Pop was watching the news program reporting on a fight at a high school between girls in Washington, D.C. Gigi was in the kitchen preparing dinner. After putting the food in the oven, she washed her hands and walked down the hall to check on Thado. Hearing her footsteps, Thado quickly put down his device and pretended to write in his notebook. Gigi asked him what he was working on. He explained that he had finished his math homework but needed to come up with an idea for his English project. He had to write a paper which involved some research and reflection. The format could be a story, essay, or a rap about any subject for his final project. The idea of a rap annoyed Gigi. She was not a fan of the genre. During the break in the news program, Pop Pop turned around and offered some suggestions for Thado to use, such as topics on space or the environment. Thado looked at Pop Pop as though he was insane. Realizing he was off track, Pop Pop suggested the history of basketball. By the way, how was basketball yesterday? He inquired. Thado had a frown on his face. Gigi asked what was wrong. Thado explained how the other kids thought he couldn't play well because he wasn't tall. He was last picked to play basketball. Just because you're tall doesn't mean you can play basketball, he added. Being his sometimes insensitive self, Pop Pop probed Thado on how well he did when he actually got to play. Thado shrugged his shoulders, indicating not so well. Pop Pop stood a little over six feet, in decent shape with a bit of a pot belly. He picked up the remote and turned off the television and told Thado to join him in the garage. Thado quickly closed his notebook and zipped his electronic console in its case cover and rushed out to the garage. Gigi went back to the kitchen to check on the food and saw there was still a good 35 minutes before she had to pull out the chicken she had placed in the oven. In front of the garage was a basketball hoop, the symbol of Pop Pop's glory days. He rummaged through a box of balls in the corner of the garage and triumphantly pulled out a basketball. It was a little flat, so he found the pump and started inflating it. Thado joined him, lending a hand. As they worked on the ball, Gigi strolled over. Pop Pop, ever the jester, passed her the ball, but it sailed right past her. Thado darted after it, while Pop Pop chuckled and said to Thado, See, Gigi's tall and she still can't play basketball. Thado smiled at Gigi and quipped, you're no Angela Reese, with a playful grin. Determined not to be outdone, Gigi snatched the ball from Thado and tossed it to her husband. Pop Pop lined up a shot and, with all the grace of a flying brick, threw an air ball. Gigi and Thado burst into laughter. Thado, caught between amusement and curiosity, asked, You two are going to try to show me how to play basketball? Pop Pop, not missing a beat, launched into a tale about his high school glory days on the court boasting about how great a player he was. His wife gave him a knowing look, but he pressed on, undeterred, embellishing the story as he went. The trio dribbled and shot at the hoop for a few minutes before Gigi took one last shot, which hit the backboard and rim. She then excused herself to go back inside and check on dinner. Soon after, Pop Pop leaned up against the porch while Thado continued to shoot around. A few moments later, a 2015 Nissan began to enter the driveway but reversed and parked on the road. Surprised, Pop Pop was happy to see the young man approaching and gave him a hug. His nephew came over, gave his uncle Brandon a side hug and placed the basketball in his hand. Immediately, the two began to play one-on-one. -on -one. As the pair played, Harold questioned what brought his son, Brandon, by. Just as Brandon was about to answer, Tommy pulled up in his pickup truck and Brandon pointed to him. It appeared that Brandon had some car trouble and needed help from his brother-in-law. When he called Tommy last night, he mentioned the case of the missing nephew for a few hours and thought he would stop by. Tommy walked up in his blue mechanic jumpsuit and work boots. The frequent bouncing of the ball and the lively conversation catch Gigi's attention in the kitchen. She stirs the pot one more time, then turns down the heat. Stepping outside, she is pleasantly surprised to see her son, Brandon. After some light chatter, Gigi offers bottles of water. She goes inside and returns with four bottles. The players take a break, sipping the cold water. 
Brandon tells Tommy about a strange sound he's hearing in his car and asks for suggestions on what it might be. As they walk towards Brandon's car, another car honks its horn. It's George's son, Junior, and his pregnant girlfriend. Junior parks in front of the driveway and Brandon jogs over to greet him with a slap on the hand. Junior introduces his girlfriend and Brandon congratulates them on their growing family. Junior looks tired, his eyes are red, and his curly blonde hair is unkept. They chat for a few minutes, but Brandon knows Tommy's time is limited since he needs to get Thado home. Brandon asks Junior for his digits, but Junior just infers he will catch up with him later. Meanwhile, Gigi calls her daughter, Zuri, and suggests she come over after work since everyone is there. She insists that she has made enough dinner for everyone. However, Zuri explains that she is exhausted being on her feet all day and wants to go home. She promises to have a family dinner at her parents' house another time. Despite Gigi's gentle encouragement, Zuri remains steadfast in her decision. Gigi prepares a pan full of food for Tommy to take home to his family and places it in the refrigerator. Outside, she hears thunderous laughter. Thado is laughing uncontrollably, while the others are more composed but still smiling. Gigi discovers that Pop Pop's flatulence has caused Thado's uncontrollable laughter. Pop Pop, smiling, suggests that Thado could do his English paper on gas and its effect on global warming. With a slightly grossed out look on her face, Gigi informs Tommy that she has prepared dinner for him to take home, as Zuri is on her way. She then tells Brandon that dinner is ready and asks him to come in and wash up. Jokingly, she suggests that Pop Pop wait outside a few minutes before joining to air out a bit. As the three sat down to eat, Brandon's parents noticed how hungry he was. He barely looked up as he quickly went for seconds on the chicken and rice dish his mother had made. Harold was pleased that Brandon had a job and was supporting himself, but he wished his son had more drive, like he did when he was growing up. He felt that both his children were somewhat spoiled, having been given much without earning it. However, Harold didn't blame them. He blamed himself for the way they were raised. Harold inquired lightly, asking Brandon how he was doing, mindful of his son's sensitivity and tendency to get upset easily. Past experiences had taught the parents that when Brandon got upset, he would avoid them for weeks. Brandon replied that life was good, his job was okay, and he enjoyed spending time with his friends. Harold wanted to ask if Brandon was aiming for any promotions at his job, but decided against it. Gloria stepped in and asked Brandon to check on his sister from time to time if he could. After helping himself to thirds, Brandon asked if there was any dessert. Gloria smiled, got up, and looked in the freezer for some ice cream. Tommy and Thado arrive home before Zuri. At the townhouse, Tommy places the food on the kitchen counter and goes to the bathroom to shower, while Thado goes to his room. Moments later, Zuri arrives home, washes her hands, and prepares and sets the table. Thado comes out, hugs his mom, and tells her about his day. Laughing contagiously, Thado shares a story about his grandfather's suggestion for his research on gases and global warming. Although Zuri tries not to be disgusted by the mention of her father's gas emissions, she finds the global warming idea fascinating. It had been a couple of months or so since she quit her position as a science teacher and helping her son with his English research paper might be just what she needs to regain a sense of purpose. All freshened up, Tommy joins his family in the kitchen for dinner. He is happy to see his wife deeply engaged in conversation with their son. On many evenings, it was like pulling teeth to have a full-fledged conversation. Zuri often responding with one-word answers or staring into space, lost in her thoughts. Recently, she had been contemplating quitting her job at the wholesale store, but worried that constantly quitting jobs would set a bad example for their son. However, this evening, she was more animated and curious, asking about her brother Brandon and why he had visited their parents. Tommy explained that Brandon had car issues and that he had told him to bring the car by the shop so he could show him how to fix it. Seeing his wife so engaged made Tommy feel that she was slowly getting back to normal, and he was happy about it. Although, Thado was about to disrupt the happy atmosphere when he asked his dad for advice about a girl he liked at school. 
his mother immediately began to interrogate him about who the girl was, her grades, and what her parents did. Tommy just chuckled, feeling amused but still happy. As always, I would love to hear your comments below. Please don't forget to like and share the video. Be sure to hit the notification button to be notified of the next video. Thank you.